Hey guys, it's Hink here. So today we're gonna to be talking about, is there a potential role for intercavernosal injections, meaning actually taking a needle and actually injecting a vasodilating or a blood expanding agent into your penis? And is that going to help cause gains, speed up gains, or be helpful in any way, shape, or form. A lot of this came from an ongoing debate that I have with this PE group. There is a one of the, the moderators, his name is JJG1951 or something. No disrespect, man, I just don't have it in front of me. He's very knowledgeable, he's very friendly, he's very respectful, he's been a solid dude. I have nothing against them, I have nothing against that subreddit, you know. At the end of the day, your risk is your risk. I just wanted to give that disclaimer. I'm not trying to throw shade at them and just do your research. And I'm sure the, the moderator of that sub is going to make a retort probably in his Discord, which he invited me to because he's very nice. But these are just my thoughts, guys. And I hope some of the guys on to watch this video and potentially avoid some really, really bad complications. So what are we talking about here, guys? Well, there's something that's called alprostadil. It's this FDA approved intracavernosal injection that can result in penile erections. Now it's different than your typical Viagra or Cialis, which work through a different phosphodiesterase inhibitor pathway. And I'll put that up on the screen here, where you can see over here is where the PDE5 inhibitors work, whereas the alprostadil system works on the cyclic AMP pathway, which causes smooth muscle relaxation in a different way. So oftentimes people that are non-responsive to Viagra or Cialis, they will respond to these intracavernosal injections. So it's a wonderful drug for guys that need it. But where it comes into PE is guys are trying to, uh, not uh, trying to, guys are abusing it. By definition, they are abusing these drugs because they think it's going to facilitate faster gains. I'm gonna be telling you what I think about that and is that a good idea? There's that drug and there's also something that's called paparavine. You know, I don't know if I'm saying that incorrectly, but it's a non-selective phosphodiesterase inhibitor. Instead of being a phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitor, this is just a generic. One, two, three, four, five, all of them. One, two, three, and two, four, four. So this drug, uh, you know, I would never recommend. It's, it's literally, so here are two papers here. Here's one showing that it has very high fibrosis rates, and here's one showing that it actually caused fibrosis so bad that the guy could not even get an implant afterwards because his junk was so messed up by these, by these injections. So you have to keep in mind, guys, that there's something that's called Trimix that guys to inject into their D as well. Do you know what it's made of? It's made of alprostadil, paparavine, and then fentylalamine. Sounds like a good time. Now, all of those things together, you know, it's, it's effective, guys. I'm not gonna act, it doesn't cause good erections. But once again, one of those main ingredients is what I just said causes permanent fibrosis. Hand cause, not necessarily guaranteed. And, and just to be clear, when I'm talking about intracavernosal, I mean the actual caverns. Here's a picture here. You take a needle so you can see where, where it's actually injected into the penis. Thank God I have some faith in humanity that most guys would not consider injecting anything into their penis unless they literally had to. They could not get an erection otherwise. These guys, and you know, BD has done this, and I've publicly gone against BD for this, guys, so I'm not throwing shade at them, but I'm, oh, well, BD's fine. No, I thought it was stupid when BD did it as well, and I made that very clear. And this is the one and only time I'm gonna say this, guys. Do you, if you want to do this, you have done your research and you feel this is a safe thing to do, then more power to you. That's, that's on you. I'm telling you my opinion, you're on my video. So alprostadil, also known as a prostaglandin E1, I said it works on a different pathway, but there's, there's literally papers showing, here's a paper right here, guys. What it showed was that in the guys that injected five times per month, once a week, over the span of just over two years, so 145 injections, there was a 25% risk of penile fibrosis. That is extraordinarily high, guys. That is directly related to the alprostadil injections or the PGE1. So here's a quote. Of the remaining 245 patients, 57 or 23.3% of them were found to have penile fibrosis, guys. One in four. Now this is a specific trial with a specific population of older men with erectile dysfunction, not otherwise healthy guys that don't have injection, that erectile dysfunction just trying to get bigger. But still, guys, that is an shockingly high rate. And they even say, patients should be specifically warned of the possibility of penile fibrosis and should be instructed on self-examination so that they can report it. This is inherently dangerous, and in my opinion, stupid. Now, I'm not saying that people who do this are stupid. I'm saying if you are so desperate to get bigger that you're willing to increase your risk of having a non-functioning member, that is, that is stupid, in my opinion. Oh, well, I said it with all due respect. So here's another paper. It shows the exact same goddamn thing. 
You're going to get fibrosis. You're not going to, it's not guaranteed, but you're dramatically increasing the risk of fibrosis. And the problem, when you do any kind of PE in general, you're pulling, twisting, you know, bop it, whatever that you're doing, you are by definition increasing, you're causing micro trauma to your junk and you are increasing your risk of fibrosis. So you're doing that. And then on top of that, you're injecting things which can increase your risk of fibrosis further. Why would you ever do that, guys? So is it all doom and gloom? Well, no. This paper looked at 214 patients that used the, the injections for at least a year and three of them got fibrosis, guys. But this is short-term follow-up. As we just saw in the last paper, it was 29 months. At 29 months or over two, just over two years, you can see a much higher rate. Only 26 patients on this most recent paper we're talking about actually used it for five years. Three out of 26 patients, that is still not an insignificant number of episodes of fibrosis, guys. Here's a European paper, and it showed that in a six-month period, six months, guys, the rate of fibrosis was 4% and priapism was 8%. No, it's not one in four of the other paper, but had much longer follow-up. But in six months, there was 4% rate of fibrosis. Why would you do this? Why why would you do this? And guys, it's not just about injecting the, the PGE1 or even the phosphodiesterase or whatever it may be. The actual micro trauma from chronically sticking a needle into your tunica actually causes fibrosis as well. Here is a rat study looking at risks for Peyronie's disease. And just the pure mechanical insertion of a needle, even in the controls, had an increased rate of plaque development. I wish you guys would understand that. And then, you know, yeah, you know, editor, hit him with the hot tank kink here. I'm in. Then the shit that really pisses me off is I got sent a screenshot from somebody from, I guess, the Discord. And they were like, well, yeah, it can increase your risk of fibrosis, but if you take Potaba and TB500 and BPC uh, and vitamins and this and that, all that is gonna limit the rate of fibrosis. You have to do all of these things to try to limit the risk of fibrosis for something that doesn't have any clear evidence that it's actually going to increase your size. And, and guys, I, I, wish, I wish you guys would understand this as well. So erection quality leads to an increase in size. If you are injecting something that is literally going to maximize and give you the hardest possible erection as possible, your chamber is going to be full as possible and you are going to be bigger. A lot of these guys don't even realize that, oh, I used a PGE1 inhibitor and I got bigger. And it's yeah, because you just you just have more blood flow to the area. It's not the actual structure is enlarging. And furthermore, I have never seen, good Lord, it's hard enough just seeing any kind of semblance of reliable demonstration of gains in guys that just do traditional PE techniques. But then... There's none of these, there's no examples of these guys that actually have tangible gains, even on this, on this subreddit. I talked about in my uh, recent weekly review, but there's this guy that's Dr. Kim P.E. Dong or something that, and he's, oh, look at me. I got bigger and I was using PGE1. All of his pictures are using a constriction device, just an unassisted measurement. For all you know, guys, all you would need to do to get bigger, if you were to just throw on some constriction rings and just wait, just use this injection, throw on a constriction ring and just wait. You are going to develop edema from the constriction of the rings and therefore you're going to get bigger. I could easily, I'm gonna do that one day just for craps and giggles. I'm gonna show how easy it can be to fake gains just by using things, leaving a constriction device on and letting some edema accumulate and showing a quarter of an inch difference and making it seem a before and after just because people are so gullible, desperate, that it just drives me crazy. Now, is it possible this actually could speed up gains? Quite honestly, yeah, I mean, a little bit. And the reason for that is because I am a firm believer that the erection quality is a key component to your gains. That's why I say if you are pumping, you have to go into the pump hard because otherwise you're just pumping a, a flaccid D and there's gonna be more edema and you're not getting the most out of it. I think that's why a lot of these old guys, oh, pumping doesn't work. That's why they say that. And that's why they're like, oh, you have to clamp. It's like, yeah, because when you're clamping, you're already starting with an engorged member. There's really no difference. That's my opinion, guys, whatever. But I don't think that any, that it's going to dramatically increase your rate of gains or else all these guys on this Kim P.E. subreddit or whatever would actually be demonstrating, wow, yeah, I'm really, man, my growth is off the chart. If it was that much different. Guys, and I, I could be wrong. I mean, you know, hey, I could be proven wrong in a little bit. So I'm not saying I'm the end all be all. This is my opinion based on my interpretation of the data.
The other risk that can't be missed is there's the risk of priapism. Guys, priapism is when you have an erection that lost, lasts more than four hours, like that's a medical emergency. They might need to drain it or, or, or even more. And that is an absolute complication with these medications, guys, is the risk of priapism, it, particularly ischemic priapism, in which you don't have adequate oxidation of the tissue, which can lead to fibrosis and necrosis, or death of the tissue of the penis, and loss of functioning. I'm gonna take a second and cool off. Guys, if you want something that's gonna maximize your penile health and maximize your erectile function and you don't want to inject something into your D, can you just try Vigor first? It's a great product, Amazon Choice, it's back in stock. We also have all our products on leviathansubs.com and of course if you want a high quality pump during your enlargement process go to peakmalephysique.com, okay? So guys you have to be smart out here. To me this is, there's this whole generation of people, you know, kids these days with their skateboards and their goddamn loud music. That's what I feel. I'm this old man, you know, yelling at the clouds, but these guys want instant results. Instead of working and training natural in the gym, these guys go on gear in their 20s. Yeah, it takes time, but at least it's going to be safer and lead to more health long term. This, this is the equivalent of trying to go on gear for faster gains. It's just, it's not going to lead to necessarily faster gains. It's Oh my gosh, you know, I, I'll do anything to get stronger. I'm gonna go on all these different products. And then guys go into freaking renal failure at 20 years old because they're not managing their high blood pressure. It's the same thing, guys. This is a very risky procedure that is not gonna even guarantee any kind of enhancement or enlargement. But yet guys are doing it because there's a chance it might work or because they went on Reddit and some guy, so not my dude, you know, JJG 1951 or whatever, but they go on some subreddit or, you know, when BD makes a post about, oh, I injected P I injected Trimix and, you know, these were my results. And guys were like, oh, okay, I want to try that. Just try to do it without it first, guys, and see what your results are. If you stagnate or, you know, you plateau or it's just not working at all and it's, and this is literally that important to you where you would rather have a broken D than a, than a, the, your current size, then maybe explore it then. But these guys that are trying to hop into it, that quite honestly don't know what they're talking about. I'm sorry, they, they don't. There was a guy on there talking about how lysyl oxidase is safe and it's a freaking drug used for myelodysplastic disorders. And they're like, oh yeah, it's phase one approved. It's, are you freaking kidding me? But of course I, ma I made a video about that, about, oh, is this anti-lux drug the future? No, it's not. None of this stuff is safe. Anyways, guys, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace and love.